adversity is the foundation of success. This is why so many people are losing. When you're fed, it's hard to be hungry. I'm confused that anybody's confused by this. Kids should be out there trying to lose. Everybody's trying to protect them. Losing is the foundation, 100%. I'm so glad I had Ball out. We ball out. Ball out. Ball out. I still have good ideas. Mm. And people pay money for ideas. People steal ideas. Mm. God still giving me ideas. That's mm. why I want to say that. Like I think ideas is the, one of the biggest forms of currency. Mm. Adversity is the foundation of success. This is why so many people are losing. When you're fed, it's hard to be hungry. I'm confused that anybody's confused by this. Kids should be out there trying to lose. Everybody's trying to protect them. Losing is the foundation, 100%. Gotcha. I'm so glad I had nothing. Do you think being an entrepreneur is a trait, is a, is a certain DNA? I think that being a great entrepreneur mm -hmm. is a talent. You can have entrepreneurial characteristics, right. but natural talent is absolutely something people are born with. Now, do I think people that it doesn't come natural to could work at it and get better? Sure. Right, no doubt. But are you gonna be all time? Attention will get you everything you want. You wanna sell a course? Attention. You wanna sell a t-shirt? Attention. You wanna be the mayor of this town? Attention. You wanna raise some money for your nonprofit because you're passionate about it? Attention. You wanna be an actor? Attention. Attention. When did you know that you achieved some type of success? I'm gonna tell you a story I've actually rarely told. So, I grew up in the liquor business. Okay. And I launched one of the first e-commerce wine businesses in America in 1996. If you did e-commerce in 96, It like, was early, and it was crazy, and it blew. I need to hear some heart. We got the mic to his heart. We got his mic uh, signed up. Oh! Then when I was like 23, 24, when it was really like clearly I was gonna make it, this big dog distributor where you buy all you're looking for yeah. asked me for lunch, and he sat me down, and he goes, hey, you got something, kid, but check it. You can only do three things, price, service, selection, and you gotta pick two out of three if you wanna make any money. And I was walking home from the meeting and I was like, them are stupid. I was like, I'm gonna get price, service, and selection. Cool, that's what I did. Over the next four years, I built my business from a three to a $60 million business. And then there was this huge article written about me and I just kind of threw in that quote. I was like, years ago somebody told me that you can only, I didn't name him because I right. wasn't putting him out like that. No, no, just it said it. you weren't being petty, yeah. And then he sent me a letter and it just said, you were right. I have to provide value. Too many businesses right now on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, every post they put out is buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. Here's where I'm gonna be, check me out, buy my book, check out my experience, watch me on my show. And nobody's providing value. So the prior book I wrote to this was called Jab, 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 Right Hook. Give, 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 ask. And it gave people a formula of how to put out content that actually gave people enough value that you then had them in a consideration to buy your stuff videos every single day. Every single day. 365. To me, content is the gateway drug to every single opportunity. Right. It costs zero to put it out there in the scheme right. of things and I think people don't understand the opportunity. You might say a quote and next thing you know it's on your hoodie and you're selling it out no Shopify. That's There's right. so much opportunity. That's great. That's a great way to look at it. People duplicate you a lot, you know? But you know what's funny? A lot of people get upset about that. For me, I don't think anybody's taken out of my pocket. I think there's so much more abundance out there yeah. than people realize. And that's what makes you a different person. That's what makes you special. You wanna have business success? Watch what I do for the rest of my life publicly. Copy it verbatim, but then put in your shit in it. And I promise you, you'll be successful. Cause I'm fucking really good at my shit. The interesting part is, why can I do what I do? Why am I not scared to make content on TikTok? Why am I willing to spend a ton of time having a ton of different shit going on and if something fails, I don't give a fuck? I have VaynerMedia, I have VaynerSport, I have a million things going on. Inevitably, some of those things are gonna fail. Things that shouldn't fail, but they're going to. When you have 87 things, you're not gonna go 87 and O. My ability to deal with your judgment when I go 70 and 13 is my strength. Why are you only doing one thing? Why don't you do shit? Because you're fucking scared. The question is why? My friends, every person here that's not 100% happy, including myself, is not doing something because of judgment of somebody else.
What was your What was your first entre- like? When did you first like? What's the first thing you sold? Um, weed. <laughs> when? Weed, weed. I sold. So when I was uh, in the seventh grade, I was in. I was twelve years old. Ooh, I wanted that one. I was twelve years old, and um, actually, my mom's boyfriend sold weed. They sold little nickel bags of weed, and um. Because the unsung thing with Nicks is, if you really break it down, there's more profit margin in Nicks than dimes. Yeah. Little. Yeah. So, yeah. Entrepreneurs out there, pay attention. Don't, don't ask Gary how he knows that. <laughs> Mount Ida College represent. <laughs> <laughs> so I sold um, nickel, nickel bags out of the window and um, eventually that house got busted with me in it. And that was one of my first encounters, not my first encounter, but one of my first encounters with the law. And. I, I often tell people that um, that when people say trap and, and, all, and all of that stuff, it's not so much glorifying. It's it's a it's a it's a rush you get. It's almost an addiction. What you probably feel about music, yeah, right? Yeah, you same, put a hundred percent. So that's why when I became a musician and felt like this was my real calling, that I felt like it was just an easy transition because I I, I love having a good product for people and, and I love being, you know, quality and, and all of those things. So, um, okay. A lot of the time, we, a lot of the times we do impulse spending, you know, when, when I was, when I was, you know, hustling, doing what I had to do, I would go, I would put myself on punishment sometimes, right? I wouldn't go to the club. I wouldn't buy no clothes, buy no new clothes. I would just stack my money up. Right. And then when I was over that time period, I would try to put it somewhere where I can not be in that same place that I was at when I had to be conscious of what I did every day and how it controlled my eating and living and all of that, right? Periods, I literally went through periods like, you know, the next 30 days, man, y'all can have that. I'm staying, I'm staying down, you know? And then, you know, I'll get some money and I'll, you know, I'll try to buy something that can, make me more buzz and 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 that's the same thing with with that's just starting off because in order to, to build generational wealth you got to start with a person it has to start with somebody literally this is what i did to you know i, I keep putting money in keep putting money in and now i have you know more businesses than i do children figure out which kid gonna get what i mean i do but it's not gonna be as hard as maybe somebody else that just got one. Entrepreneur.